just to do a quick introduction and then we will start the session. Um, who I am. My name is Evelyn. I live here in Pretoria with my husband Ryan. We've been, I've known Dr. Arthur Frost for 20 years now, which is a long time. And many of those years I've been under him in training. He's learned me many things, him and Janine, and I'm very grateful to have them in my life. Um, more about me, um, I'm an apostle, I'm a traveling minister of the gospel. My, my heart um, is deliverance, restoration, healing in the lives of people. My, my training with dreams have started many years ago and it's just been growing and growing. And uh, that's my heart for you too, that as I share with you tonight, I know that tonight can be the start of something special for you. Um, I've been teaching on dreams for a number of years now. I've also been up in Africa in various countries and helping people to understand their dreams better. And that's what I want to do for you tonight as well. But I know that it's the Holy Spirit who does the work. Amen. So I'm very excited about tonight. I've been preparing and I'm very excited. I know something's going to be special tonight. Um, something else about me is, is that I am a prophetic teacher. What that means is how God uses me in that regard is that when I'm standing in front of a group of people, I'm going to minister to them. The Holy Spirit would have given me a prophecy for that group of people who I am ministering to. And the same for tonight. God had an appointment with you tonight to be watching. There are people who are still going to watch this video after the broadcast. The Holy Spirit gave me a prophecy for you who is listening. And now I'm going to share it with you. If you have pen and paper, then you write it down. You see, I can speak wonderful words tonight, but if your heart is not open to receive it, it's not going to mean anything to you. So I want to ask you to open up your heart tonight. I'm going to share this prophecy with you that the Holy Spirit gave me, and I know that He's going to start something in you. So I wrote it down, and if you have pen and paper with you, maybe it's even on your phone, then you make notes. This is a prophecy for you. Are you ready to receive it? Let me give it to you. I want to give you revelation so that restoration can come. As I give you revelation, wisdom will guide you in the season you find yourself in. This is a promise, says the Lord. I want to give you what you need in this time, but you need to trust me. You are still in the way too much, says the Lord. You want to do things your own way, your own strength. You are in the way. Do you really trust me? Are you truly committing all to me? Come to me. Commit to me. I will bestow upon you revelation. And from that, restoration will come. Because a lot has happened these last couple of weeks. A lot of turmoil, frustration and disappointment. But giving me those areas of your life that have become slow and dull, I will come and give you wisdom, instruction and direction in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the word that the Holy Spirit gave me for you for tonight. That's a prophetic word. It's a word for this season that you are in. So we will make this prophecy available. I will send this prophecy also to Dr. Arthur Frost, and I will also make it available on my Facebook page. This is a prophecy for you from the Lord for this season. Take it to heart. Take it for you. The Holy Spirit wants to come 
and bring revelation and it's going to start right now. Are you ready? I'm so excited. I know the Holy Spirit is here. He's going to do something tonight. He's going to do something. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Rasha koroto kita rachama ba boroho koroto katashama ba ba. Shokoroto kita rachama. Father, I pray for every person that's going to watch this video, those people who are watching right now, and those people who are still going to watch it. Rasha koroto kita rachaba. Rasha koroto kita rachamo boro shokoroto ka. Father, you show me that we need to recommit our dreams to you. The time that we sleep, we need to recommit it to you. The, the Holy Spirit is showing me that there are too many distractions. We want God to speak to us in our dream time. We want God to show us revelation. We want those things, but we have our part to play. This is going to take an action from you right now with me. Tonight, we are rededicating our dream lives back to God. Are you ready to do that? You made a commitment to tune in tonight. You are making a commitment to watch this video. We are rededicating. We are rededicating our dream lives back to God. Let's give it back to God. Lord Jesus, we give back our dream lives to you. Father, we have allowed too many distractions, things we watch in the news, things we watch on television, things that we listen to. We've been listening to the lies of Satan and it has been distracting us and it has been disturbing us in our dream time when we should be sleeping and spending time with you and dreams that you want to give us. So tonight, in the name of Jesus, we recommit our sleep time, we recommit our dream time back to you in the name of Jesus and we want to repent. I want to wherever you are, wherever you are watching from, wherever you are, just say Lord Jesus I give you back my dreams. I give you back my dreams. I want my nights to be, fu be filled with godly dreams again. In the name of Jesus I give it back. I give it back. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus, that I've been giving in to fear and anxiety and worries. I've been allowing too many influences. And tonight I repent in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. I rededicate my dream life and I give it back to you in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. If you are sitting in a living room and you are surrounded by people and you need to have a moment alone, then take your phone and go to a room and close the door behind you. Just give your dreams back to God now. Holy Spirit, come. Rabo shokoroto kita rachaba. Shokoroto kata shamo baba berochokoroto kita rachama. The Holy Spirit is moving tonight. He said that he wants to bring restoration. He wants to bring revelation and restoration. So allow him to do that now in Jesus' name. Repent. No more bad influences. No more distractions. The dreams belong to God again. Amen. Your dreams belong to God again. I see the Holy Spirit is showing me that some of you are even afraid sometimes to go to bed because you don't enjoy your sleep anymore. You don't enjoy sleeping anymore. The Holy Spirit is showing many of you feel almost like it, you feel stressed when you have to go to your bed at night because you're not enjoying your sleep. You wonder what you're gonna dream. What nightmare is it going to be tonight? The Holy Spirit is showing me some of you are afraid to go to bed at night because you don't know what you're gonna dream. No more. The Holy Spirit wants to come and heal and restore you. He wants to come and heal and restore you. No more. I declare it over you. I stand in my authority as an apostle and I say in the name of Jesus, the enemy will not steal your sleep from you anymore. The Bible says even in Psalm 4, peace when I sleep because God is my protector. Peace in my sleep because God is my protector. I declare it over you in the name of Jesus. 
You will not be afraid anymore to go to sleep. You will not be afraid of what nightmares you're going to have anymore. In the name of Jesus, I declare it over you. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. That was just the beginning. <laughs> I'm so excited. My love for dreams have been coming with me for a number of years. And let me tell you, God has used me with dreams to pray for people for healing, for deliverance. God has given me prophecies for people in dreams. God has shown me what I needed to deal with in my life through dreams. The possibilities that God does through us is endless. It's endless when he, the way he uses dreams. And I am trusting the Holy Spirit. You know, he gave me the word revelation. That means he wants to do something tonight. He wants to give you revelation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my husband will be joining us every now and then because the Holy Spirit has given us a few words of knowledge for many of you. Some, the Holy Spirit has shown us that some of you have had certain dreams and God wants to address those things tonight. So it's not just only teaching, but it's also ministering to you. So be ready and receive tonight what God wants to do for you. I want to, before I go over to the first couple of words of knowledge, I want to say two things before I start with the official teaching. The first thing is, I am not a dream interpreter. The real dream interpreter is the Holy Spirit because He is the only one that can bring true revelation. I can give you knowledge and I can give you guidelines, but it is the Holy Spirit that makes it real. It is the Holy Spirit that makes it real. He's the one that shows you what He is trying to convey to you through a dream. Yes, He has given me a grace and He has given me a gift and this is an area that God has, has been using me to speak into the lives of people. And I do. Every day, I'm helping people to understand their dreams. People send me their dreams all the time. And I have to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what were you trying to say here to this person? But I am not a dream interpreter. The Holy Spirit is the dream interpreter. Amen? Then, I want to talk about symbols because I know that it's a very confusing subject. And I wanted to get it out of the way before I officially start the teaching, because this is very important to me and important to anyone who dreams, which is everyone, because everybody dreams. The thing about symbols is that symbols are not the meaning of a dream. Symbols are there to confirm the meaning of the dream. They add value. They explain it further. They help you to understand the message even better. You see, Jesus spoke in parables. And he didn't speak in parables because he wanted to confuse the people. He spoke in parables to explain a principle to them. To explain what he was trying to say. Or the message that he was trying to convey over to them. Symbols are not meant to confuse us. And I have to be honest with you, when people come to me, they want to talk about the symbols. And that is not the crux of the dream. Symbols are there to explain it for you further, to bring clarity, to bring understanding. Even, and listen to my heart, even if there was a book on this planet that had every symbol known to man, with their explanations. Why would God give me a dream if all I had to do was to go to that book and go look up a symbol and say, okay, that's what the dream means. Thank you. And you go on with your day. That's not relationship. Jesus is a personal God. That's why the word tells us that he knows how many hairs are on your head. 
He is a personal God. I'm going to use the example of a car. Many people talk and they will say a car means your ministry. When you dream about a car, it refers to your ministry. And out of my personal experience, I can tell you I've had many dreams where I'm in a car. And sometimes the car meant the ministry trip that I was invited to go do. Sometimes the car referred to my marriage. Sometimes the car referred to the situation I was in. Sometimes the car referred to something totally different and had nothing to do with my ministry. If I just went to a book and I looked at the symbol of a car, I could have missed if maybe that dream was a warning. That's why it causes so much confusion when people come to me and say, but this means that, and this means that. What is the Holy Spirit showing you? What does that mean? You see, the color red to me can mean the blood of Jesus. To my husband, Ryan, it can mean love. To another person, it can mean stop, danger. To another person, it can mean just be careful, slow down. What does that symbol mean to you? Maybe there's, some, there's a symbol that will remind you of a scripture. And you go look it up in the Bible because God, of course, never speaks out of line of his word. What is that symbol in the Bible? And maybe when you read that scripture, you understand the message of your dream. I wanted to say something about symbols and I wanted to make it clear. I don't want to hinder God in, in showing me what he's trying to communicate to me through a dream. I don't want symbols to get in the way. Symbols are there to enrich the message and the instruction that God is giving me in a dream. The symbols are not what the dream is about. I hope you hear my heart. I'm not speaking bad about any other books. I know there are many dream books out there. And they, these are people who want to help the body of Christ. Just like I'm trying to help you tonight. And I'm saying that I serve the God of creativity. And I don't want to limit him. He gave you that dream for a reason. And he, gave, and he put certain symbols in there in your dream for a reason. Let's not limit him by just looking at a list of symbols and saying, this means that, and this means that. It can cause you confusion. And Jesus didn't speak in parables to confuse people. He spoke in parables to bring understanding and revelation. Amen. We're going to start with the official teaching now. If you want to get your notebook, if you want to write things down, I invite you to do so. Speaking of books, let me quickly just mention to you that I have now released my first book on dreams. This will be the first book of a series. So it's called Do You Dream? God is Speaking to You. And uh, if you look at the cover, you'll see that I had the word you all typed in capitals and I did I had that done for a reason because God is speaking to you you personally he's a personal God and he's trying to warn you or instruct you or guide you or to reveal things to you or teach things to you God is speaking to you I will give more information and will also be on Facebook more information on the cost but we'll get to that later. I want to minister to you first. Let's go over to the teaching part. Remember, you must be ready. God has given us a few words of knowledge on certain dreams. And I want you to be ready to receive your breakthrough tonight. You get four types of dreams. And all these four types of dreams you find in scripture as well. You get four types of dreams. You get dreams of warning, dreams of instruction, teaching dreams, or I call them also revelation dreams, and dreams of promise, future dreams. Four types of dreams. The first dream I want to talk about are dreams of warning. And I will always spend a little bit more time, whenever I teach on dreams, 
I always spend a little bit more time on dreams of warning. Because the reason for that is God has shown me and Ryan, for example, so many things in dreams that he's been warning us about. The thing is, if you don't pay attention to a dream of warning, you are giving your enemy authority. But the moment you pay attention to a dream of warning, you're taking away that authority from the enemy and you're saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? How must I be ready for what is coming? Can you now see the importance of a dream of warning? So let me start teaching you on a dream of warning. So as I've just mentioned, what is a dream of warning? It's when God is warning you about something that is to come. Something that he wants you to be ready for. Something that he wants you to be prepared for. The thing is, just because God is warning you, that event he's warning you about is either a changeable event or an unchangeable event. Now your question will be, why would God warn me about something that's unchangeable? Let me show you a scriptural example. I'm not going to go too much into the stories. I want you to write it down so that you can go read it yourself because I'm limited in time. Genesis 41 is about Pharaoh and the famine. God warned Pharaoh in two dreams that a famine is coming. Now there's already something I want to teach you about a dream of warning. If a dream keep on, keeps on repeating itself, you need to come to the realization that God is busy warning you about something that's very important and it's urgent. You need to respond to it. You need to say, Lord, this is now the second or the third or the fourth time that I'm dreaming something like this. I need to know what you are warning me about. God gave Pharaoh twice a dream about the famine that is coming. God is not saying the famine is now not going to come. The famine is going to come. But God gave the dream to give the people ample time to prepare, to get the storehouses full so that the people don't have to suffer and die during the time of famine. He gave the people that warning to prepare them for the famine that is to come. And that's exactly why God will even warn you of something that is unchangeable. Yes, that thing may come, but it is God is warning you so that you can prepare yourself for what is to come. Now I want to give you a quick personal example because there's one that I know I must share with you, which is a miracle in itself. And then there's this one that I know I must share with you right now. I had a dream a few years ago that I was stabbed in the stomach. The, the blade went into my stomach completely. I couldn't see the blade anymore. The only stick sticking out was the handle. The only part sticking out was the handle. That's all. That's all the dream was. So when I wake up, what is the first thing you experience? Fear. Fear. Now I want to teach you another thing about dreams of warning. Just because when you wake up from a dream and it causes you distress, doesn't mean it's Satan. It doesn't mean it's demonic. You need to discern if it's a warning of God or whether it's an attack from the enemy, a nightmare. We need the gift of discernment. And tonight, as an apostle, I will also release an impartation for you tonight for that gift of discernment. Because you need discernment to know when it's God, when it's the pizza you ate last night with chocolate, or whether it's the enemy trying to intimidate you with fear. You need the gift of discernment. So when I woke up from that dream, I had to discern because that's not a nice dream to wake up from. And I knew, all right, this is not the enemy. God is warning me. Something is going to come. Now I had to ask the Holy Spirit, who is this dream about? It's obviously about me. God, what is the warning? What are you warning me? And to me, to me, not what a symbol says, to me, when I get stabbed in, a, in my stomach area, it means I can't function properly. I can't operate like a normal human being. I'm, I'm stabbed in an area that everything is connected to my abdominal area. It's a crucial part of my body. And the Holy Spirit showed me that a sickness attack is going to come to me. I have to be prepared. 
So I've been praying for my protection. We even took it to my pastor. He was praying and interceding for my protection. And I was being prepared for whatever attack wants to come. Two weeks later, I started experiencing great distress in my ears. Dizziness, nausea, vomiting, lightheadedness. I ended up being in a specialist office and he diagnoses me with Menea syndrome. That is a difficulty in the eardrums. Some people only have it in one ear. I have it in both. Now I am also a worship leader. That meant I couldn't be on stage anymore. I couldn't work on my laptop anymore. I couldn't drive around anymore. I could hardly do anything that I normally would do because of this. The moment the specialist told me this diagnosis, and there's no cure for it, by the way, immediately the Holy Spirit reminded me of the dream of the knife in my stomach. And I said, I know what this is. It's not my portion. I know this is an attack. The enemy wants to slow me down to not do the work of God. And now I knew how to handle it. In a year's time, that thing completely left my body. I have never had any symptoms of that since. God prepared me. That is what the power of a dream of warning is. The key is, is that you need to respond to a dream of warning. If God is giving you a warning, you have to say, Lord, what is the warning? And what do you want me to do? It's not going to fall out of the sky. I have my part to play. What do you want me to do with this warning? You see, what the devil wants, he wants fear to grip your heart. Because that's the very first thing that happens when you wake up from a dream that causes you distress. Fear is the very first thing that grips your heart. Now you need to discern, you know, Lord, this is a warning from you and I'm not going to let fear grip my heart. The enemy, what does fear do? Fear freezes you in position and you don't take any action. That's why many of you have been having dreams of warning and we're going to address some of them now. You've been having dreams of warning and when you wake up, because of the fear, you rather ignore the dream and you want to go on with your day. It's here in the back of your mind, but you made a decision you're not going to pay attention to it because it caused you distress. When in fact, God was warning you about something that is to come. You see, I want to read you a scripture, and we all know it. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be alert, and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. You see, you have an enemy. He doesn't want you to be sober. He doesn't want you to be vigilant. That's why God gives you a dream of warning. He wants you to see what is coming. God wants you to see what is coming. When we don't pay attention to our dreams of warning, we are giving that authority back to the enemy and we're saying, yeah, whatever. Let whatever needs to happen, happen. That's not God. God wants to warn you so that you can be prepared. He did it in Genesis already. He's still doing it today. Now I'm going to share with you this example quickly because I know it's going to build your faith. And then we're going to, I'm going to call my husband and we're going to start ministering to those people and to you with dreams of warning. The personal example I want to share with you is last year, April, God gave me a dream and listen to this dream carefully. In the dream, there were three terrorists. They came into an old age home. I was standing in the old age home. They came into the old age home and they had petrol bombs in their hands. But now how they used those petrol bombs, they would first throw it into a room with an elderly couple inside and then they set it alight. But we know, we all watch movies. They actually first set it alight and then throw it. But in my dream, they first throw it and then they set it alight. I would be facing with my back towards the terrorist and trying to protect the old people. And none of the old people got hurt. They were maybe traumatized a little, but none of them died or got hurt. I was there protecting them. 
So I wake up and I say, Lord, this is obviously a dream of warning. Now I'm going to give you the interpretation. I knew the old people represented the vulnerable, people who are struggling that can't always protect themselves because they're elderly, they're vulnerable. And I knew that I had to pray protection over people who are vulnerable because evil wants to hurt them. That's difficult. I don't know who I'm praying for. I don't know who these people are who I'm praying protection over. I'm just obedient to what the Holy Spirit shows me. And I pray against any terrorist attack that might be going against the vulnerable. Now, you can even go Google it because it's the truth. I've been praying for that. A month later, in the news, in Paris, France, three terrorists went to a shopping area, a shopping mall, and they stood in the door and they placed the bomb. The bomb exploded and it was full of people, but not one single person was injured or died. The reason those bombs, those petrol bombs that they used in the dream, they did it the wrong way around, remember? Do you know that that also had a meaning? Because it came out in the news article that they actually had a plan A and it didn't succeed because the cops heard that there was an attempt on an attack. You see, I know that God already summons other people to pray against plan A and he summons me and probably other people too to pray against plan B and it didn't succeed. Can you see the power of a dream of warning? God wants to use you in the lives of many people God wants to use you to pray protection over people, to pray protection over your family. But if we don't pay attention to our dreams, we are missing out on what God wants to do through us. So this is what I want you to remember. If you wake up from a dream and it caused you distress, I want you to ask yourself first off, discern, is this a dream from God? Is this an attack from the enemy trying to intimidate me? Then when you know it's from God, you must say, Lord, who is this dream about? Is it about me? Is the warning for me? Or is this dream, is this warning for someone else? And then you must ask the Holy Spirit, what is the warning and what do you want me to do about it? Maybe you must keep on praying for protection like I had to. Maybe you need to go to speak to someone and give them their warning. There's there's an instruction behind it. It's not just, thank you, Lord, and you move on with your day. That's not relationship. Now we're going to minister to some people. Ryan, you can come here with me. The Holy Spirit gave us a few words of knowledge for people um, about a few dreams of warnings. And the Holy Spirit wants to deal with them tonight. I received a word of knowledge that there's maybe a few of you, but I saw somebody had a dream that you were doing strange things while it's nighttime. In your dream, it's nighttime. And you are doing, it's almost like you're doing a criminal thing with people that you don't even know. You are doing something in the dark. That's what the dream was about. You remember you were doing something. It's not even about what you did, but you were doing it at nighttime. And it refers to it's things that you shouldn't be involved with. It's things that you shouldn't be doing. Now, the warning comes in because God is saying you are involved with something, with people that you shouldn't be involved with. That's the warning. You had this dream. And I know that as I'm saying it right now, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And that you are bring, it's, He's bringing it to your remembrance right now. You were doing something with your hands with people that you don't even know and it's at night time and it disturbed you when you woke up because you like i don't want to do things that aren't right the warning in that dream is as god is telling you to get out of that situation you are involved with people whose agendas are not true and they are not real and god is warning you to get out you know who you are as you're listening to me right now you know you had that dream and this is your interpretation. It's been a dream of warning.
So now I pray for you in the name of Jesus. And I say thank you, Father, that what you reveal, you want to come heal, just like you prophesied earlier tonight. And I say thank you, Father, that now I come against. I say thank you, Father, that those people who want to steal, kill, and destroy from your children, thank you, Father, that you are now revealing to these people who are listening, who had that dream, to get out in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them discern. Let them know it's me. I need to get out of this situation. It's not right for me to be in it. So I say thank you, Father, that you will now give them the wisdom and the understanding on how to get out, because that's very important. God wants you to pray and say, Lord, show me how to get out of this situation, because it can backfire on you. So now I pray for wisdom. I release wisdom over these people in the name of Jesus. They will know how to get out of this situation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that they will be obedient and they will get out of this situation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're getting out. God is warning you and you're making a decision to get out. But God will show you how to do it. God will show you how to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's wonderful. Dreams of warning are so important in our lives. In the, in the times we live in, we know we face many challenges and many difficulties and God really, really cares deeply for us. That's why he gives us dreams of warnings. He does not want us to be caught off guard. I have, while we were praying, uh, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. Um, someone, it's a man, you had a dream that you were in a car accident. You were in a motor vehicle accident, almost like a head-on collision, but there was an accident and the whole, your whole car, the front of your car was really badly damaged. Now this is a dream of warning. It's got nothing to do with God warning you about you being in a car accident to come. So this, you don't have to fear about that. What God is showing if you through this dream is that there's a difficult time that you're going to face, whether you're in it now or whether it's going to come, but there's a difficult time that you're going to face. Now that in the dream God showed me, in the vision God showed me, in your dream, you weren't injured, you weren't hurt yourself. So that dream shows that you're not going to be physically hurt or injured, but your vehicle was injured. Your, your, your life, that which, that your finances, that which, which, which you use, your work situation, your financial situation, there's an event coming, it's an unchangeable event that God is warning you about, that you're going to be in an accident, this event is going to affect you, it's going to affect your car, which most probably is your livelihood that it's going to affect. So God is warning you so that when this happens, you don't run halter skelter, you don't run, oh, oh, what must I do now about my job, what must I do now about the situation, but God is warning you to prepare you, something is coming, but you do not have to fear nothing is going to happen to you physically that is a, a good point in the dream that nothing bad is going to happen to you physically but your financial situation you're going to face a difficult circumstance that wants to guide you through so I want to pray for you father we need wisdom I pray for that man who needs wisdom what must he do in what direction he must go I speak to that fear that wants to come against him I say be silenced in Jesus name let that voice of fear be silenced father they give him clear direction in the decision that he needs to make in the direction he needs to go how to handle that situation is what I pray for that man who had the dream of the car accident in Jesus name amen then there's another last word of knowledge about dreams of warning that God showed me I saw it specifically a woman that had this dream you had a dream where a young man is coming up to you and he's just standing in front of you he's just standing in front of you when you wake up from that dream you actually anxious you're actually afraid him standing there and staring at you is causing you fear and anxiety and it's been influencing your daily life that dream that dream is not of God and he's warning you he's warning you you need to take back authority that spirit in that man that is standing in front of you is trying to take away your identity and trying to steal your boldness that you need to function and he's been stealing your authority and your and your confidence so now I'm gonna pray for you if you are that person and you've had a dream where a young man is standing in front of you and he's looking at you and he's trying to intimidate you and when you wake up you're actually scared and anxious 
I'm going to pray now in the name of Jesus. I come against that spirit that has been trying to use intimidation and fear to hinder you from doing what you are called to do. And I come against you. It has even influenced your relationships. I don't know who you are, lady, but I know that it's even influenced your relationships. You've been afraid to step out because of fear and anxiety. And that spirit in that dream has been hindering you. It's been causing fear and anxiety. So I come against that spirit of fear now in the name of Jesus and I rebuke you and I tell you, you will have no more hold over that daughter of God in the name of Jesus. I break your hold, that hold of fear and anxiety. She will have no more fear and anxiety. She will not be afraid to go to bed anymore because she knows that dream is not going to happen anymore. I'm looking at you, that spirit of fear, and I'm telling you to go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. We close that door that she has opened for that spirit to come and torment her. We're closing that door tonight in the name of Jesus. You will have no more place and right in her sleeping time anymore. She, has re she is rededicating her sleeping time to God and you will have no more hold over her in the name of Jesus. I release that peace over you tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are free. You are free. You are free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Shokoroto kita rahama brochokoroto kata shaba. Roshokoroto kita rahama baba brochokoroto kata shama. How much time do I have left? 18 minutes. 18? I do not have a lot of time left. <laughs> you must please hold on with me. We've got 18 minutes left. Is it then an hour? Yeah. The second type of dream is dream of instruction. The reason it's a type of dream is because not every dream has an instruction with it. Maybe God just wants to reveal something to you. You see, it's like a marriage. Not every time I see Ryan, he wants something from me. Sometimes it feels that way, but it's not true. Every time I see Ryan, he doesn't want something from me. It's the same with God. Just because he's showing you something doesn't mean he wants you to do something about it. Sometimes God just wants to reveal something to you. Amen? That's why a dream of instruction, it's its own type of dream. Sometimes you get combinations of dream. Sometimes it's a warning and a dream of instruction. Or it's a promise dream with a dream of instruction. You get combinations. You need discernment. So a dream of instruction, obviously, it's the type of dream where God wants to instruct you. He wants you to do something specific. Now it may be some, sometimes the instruction God gives you is not easy. Sometimes God is asking you to forgive someone. Now here comes a word of knowledge again. It's coming up with, to me right now. Some of you have had a dream and I see there's actually one of the people is a man and you sometimes dream, you just see the face of this person that you know in a dream. When you wake up, you're actually agitated and angry. Oh, why is this guy in my dream again? Because you're actually angry with him. God is showing that man's face to you because he wants you to forgive him. Because your unforgiveness is holding you back. You see, sometimes the instruction that God gives us through a dream is not an easy instruction. And it's not something we always want to do. God has shown me in a dream that I've had to forgive Christians who have hurt me very deeply. I've been walking around with that bitterness and anger for 10 years. When God gave me that dream, the last thing I wanted to do was forgive those people. I decided to be obedient to that dream, to that instruction, and I went through three months of hell, forgiving those people, praying for them, praying God's blessing. When I started being obedient, the Holy Spirit gave me another dream. And that dream he showed me, I have to go to them and ask them to forgive me. Maybe I did something that hurt and offended them. Now there's the power of obedience because now I'm going to give you the testimony. I went to those Christians and I asked them to forgive me. That same week, my ministry started. That is the power of obedience. That is the power of obedience. When you respond to your dream and you do what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do in a dream, 
There's power behind it and your breakthrough comes. That's why Luke eleven twenty eight 28 says, Blessed are those who hear the word of the Lord and who keep it. There's going to be blessing for you when you choose to be obedient. Do you have any words of knowledge for dreams of instruction? I'm so sorry. We don't have enough time. I usually have a whole day conference to do this. Words of knowledge. Words of knowledge, yes. Uh, dreams of instruction, right? Okay. So as we were preparing, uh, I had a vision of a man. It's a man who had a dream. And on the dream, you were walking on a tight, on a tight rope. Uh, and on the, you climbed on the tight rope, it was very, very high in this tight rope, and you, were, you, were, you, you couldn't keep your balance. You were really struggling to keep your balance. And the Lord shows us this is what the dream is about. You want to make a big life-changing decision. Is something new that you want to take on in your life? It's a total new direction maybe that you want to go into. You know you've been meditating on this thing the whole time. And that's why you're on this, this, this high tightrope. It's something new. seems very exciting. Some, maybe something a little bit scary. You're on this tightrope. You're not falling on it, but you're really struggling to walk. And this has to do with the decision. God wants to give you instruction concerning a decision that you want to make in a new direction. Now on this tightrope, you can't keep your balance and God is showing you this dream that you're not ready yet to make that decision. God wants you to hold off on that big life-changing decision, that new thing you want to bring into your life or that new thing you want to do because you're not prepared for it. You can't walk on that tight tightrope. You're not prepared for it. So God wants you to hold horses. He wants you to put the brakes on concerning this big life-changing decision that you want to make so that you do not fall off. You can make that decision. And you can walk on that type road, but the Lord shows through this, it will be very, very difficult time. And you'll go through unnecessary difficulties. The Lord wants you to hold, hold off. The instruction is to hold off on that life-changing decision. To wait on Him to receive inst instruction on which direction to go and what to do. God bless you. The other word of knowledge that I have about a dream of instruction some, somebody had a dream where you are crippled in your dream or you struggle to walk. Maybe you are even lame in your dream and you know you have to get to a destination. But every time you are lame, you are crippled. Somehow you just can't get. Your body is not able to carry you to your destination. It's a very frustrating dream. When you wake up from that dream, you're angry. You're frustrated. God is giving you an instruction and he's showing you that you have too much anger inside of you. Too many people have hurt you and disappointed you. And it's crippling you. It's holding you back. It's, it's hindering you from getting to your destination. You need to forgive. God showed me what personal example to use tonight for a reason. Because there are many of you, God has been showing you in a dream that you need to forgive. And it's hindering you from getting to where you should be. Tonight, I'm challenging you to make a decision. If God is showing you right now who you need to forgive, forgive them right now. In the name of Jesus, I release that over you. Right now, you know that face that's coming up in your mind's eye right now. And there's anger, there's bitterness. You are upset with that person. You need to forgive them right now. So speak that person's name and say, Lord, I forgive him. I forgive Peter. I forgive John. I forgive them in the name of Jesus. Let go of that anger. Let go of that anger in Jesus' name. The third type of dream are dreams of teaching or revelation. This is the type of dream where God is showing you principles. He's teaching you principles that you are going to need in the seasons that are to come. Most of my dreams, here is my dream book. It's full of dreams that I've been having for many years. Most of my dreams are teaching dreams where God has been teaching me principles. And, I, and I'm not lying to you. I've been applying these principles whenever I minister. God has been teaching me things about spiritual matters. And I apply them every single time I minister to people. God is preparing me with teaching dreams. A biblical example is Matthew 27, Pilate's wife. I can't go into it too much now. God has used dreams of teaching and revelation to show me things that I needed to deal with in my heart. A 
few weeks ago, God showed me there's still a root in my life that I need to deal with and that has even affected my marriage. God showed me that through a dream. When I woke up from that dream, I said, Holy Spirit, what is this root? I asked for the interpretation. He showed me this is what I need to deal with and I got it broken over my life. That next day, I could even physically feel a difference in my life because of that thing that was broken. And it started with a dream of teaching and revelation. I know Ryan has a word of knowledge for dreams of teaching. Remember, when God gives you a revelation through a dream, you have to write it down. God is giving you this teaching for a reason. You're going to need it for a reason. There are things in here that I need. Whenever I minister, I have to remember these teachings. He's showing you something for a reason. You need to write it down and you have to keep reminding yourself of these teachings. God is teaching you something for a reason. Okay, so there was a lady, it's a, it's a woman this time, and uh, you had a dream. The dream that you had was you were being chased through a forest. It was also during the evening, you were being chased to the forest and you were looking behind you and you're being chased. Something is chasing you in your dream in this forest. You're trying to get away from, from this dream and you woke up very, very, very fearful the next day. So this is a revelational dream because even in your life, you find yourself struggling with fear. You have fear of failure. You, have, you struggle with relationships, you have fear of rejection, you have fear people are going to reject you, and, God, and Satan is tormenting you in many other dreams of fear. You're being harassed in the evening. Now, this is not a dream of warning. God is showing you that, the, that Satan is, that you're struggling with fear, and fear is a spirit. You're struggling with fear and God wants to set you free from this fear that's been hindering your life, that's been chasing you in dreams, that's been hindering your relationships and hindering the decisions you've been making in your life. Mm -hmm. Now God has not released me to pray for deliverance for you, but he just wants to reveal to you that you're struggling with fear and he wants to deal with the spirit of fear. So my prayer is that God will lead you because the Lord says that you will need counseling this time because it's many, many, many years of wrong thinking. You will not only need deliverance, but you'll need to reset the way that you think. So my prayer is that God will lead you to a counselor, to a Holy Spirit filled counselor who will not only do deliverance on you, but will counsel you and help you to get free from that spirit of fear and to walk in victory. God bless you. Then the last type of dream, after I've explained this one, we're going to minister to you prophetically. And then I'm also going to impart, as an apostle, I'm going to impart activation. Because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. Your dream life will never be the same again. I've been trusting God for this. And I know He's going to come through. He never disappoints. The last type of dream is dreams of promise. That is when God gives you a glimpse of your future. He gives you something to look forward to. Many times God gives that promise dream in the midst when you need it the most. Because you're going to hold on to that dream when things go very bad with you. When your circumstances are saying the exact opposite. You see, the best example of that is Genesis 37 with Joseph. When he had a dream that people are going to bow down to him. He, but Joseph went to a, a, a pit and a prison he was forgotten about. Let me tell you, he was holding on to that dream. He knew it wasn't his portion. When God gives you a prophetic dream and he shows you how he wants to use you in the lives of other people, it's not going to fall out of the sky. Your response to a dream of promise must be to keep on praying, to wait upon the Lord. You know, Isaiah Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, wait upon the Lord. What does it mean to wait? It doesn't mean you sit back and wait for things to happen. The word wait means you keep on pressing in. You keep on praying. You keep on seeking God's face until that breakthrough comes. You have your part to play. God showed me in many dreams, many years ago already, God showed me that I'm going to minister to people through words of knowledge. Ever since I had those dreams, what did I do? I started practicing the gift of word of knowledge. I'm submitted under a prophetess today who operates in a similar manner. And I learn from her. I write down notes. 
I, I learn from her how she operates in that gift. I hunger for it. I activate it. I say, Lord, I want to operate like you showed me in my dreams. I practice it. If God shows you, I see that some of you are musicians and you've been having dreams of you singing in front of crowds. You have your part to play. When you wake up from a dream like that, you say, Lord, what must I do to get there? It's not just going to happen. You are the one that can be in the way from that to happen. Your duty with the dream of promise is to keep on pressing in and ask the Holy Spirit, how do I get there? Do you have a word of knowledge? A dream of promise requires action. Faith acts now. Yes, that's right. So a dream of promise, very important, has to do with preparation. Because a dream of promise has to do with something that's going to happen in the future. Now, there are various businessmen and businesswomen that are looking at this, this program and that those, will, those later will see this as well. God has given you many dreams of promise concerning your business, concerning your family, but specifically businessmen. But we need to take, pay more attention to those dreams. And that's what, that's what my wife said. You really need to pray those things through. If God has promised you to be a successful businessman, you need to take those dreams and pray it through. So I see there are many, many businessmen who have received dreams of promises, but you haven't seen it. So you must take authority and you need to Claim those things, pull those things in, and start walking in that. You also need to prepare for those for that blessing. You need to prepare your business and and get your business in a position so that you can grow. Go look for those contracts. If God has said you're going to be blessed through your dreams, go and get those contracts. Or if you're a young man, you know you've called, you're having dreams concerning business, you need to get yourself pre prepared. Ask the Holy Spirit, must I go and study something in business? Or must I go and work in a certain company and go learn from a certain mentor? What is it that I need to do to fulfill my destiny as a businessman? We have to take action when we receive dreams of promise. I also see that there are certain of you that have had dreams where you're standing in front of massive crowds, whether you're a musician, whether you're a minister of God, maybe you're a public speaker. You need to take action in preparation if you're going to stand in front of crowds. If you call to the gospel of Jesus Christ, what is the message that God has given you? Maybe many of you had dreams that you're going to travel to different nations and do different things. Do you have your passport ready? Have you prepared? Maybe have you started studying another language? which you see dreams of promise we have to take action and prepare for those and when we prepare for those those things our dreams seem to our dreams of promise will come fast come to fruition faster than we think they do how much time do i have left i think you have a minute left maybe all right let's use this last minute to activate i know this is a lot to take in and maybe you need to go listen to a few things again um, i have a book available we will give you the information on Facebook. This is a guide. It will help you. I know the Holy Spirit is in that book. Tonight, God wants to activate, reactivate your dream life again. So as my position as an apostle, I know that I have the gift of impartation. So wherever you are right now, stretch out your hands. Be in an attitude of receiving. Doesn't matter whether you look stupid. It doesn't matter you want to receive tonight. Amen? I'm now going to speak a reactivation of your dream life in the name of Jesus. You have rededicated your dreams again to God and you even do that. If you haven't done it yet, you do that tonight. But tonight I release an activation of your dream life. Those of you who said I don't want to dream anymore because I don't understand them. No more. You will dream again in the name of Jesus. Some of you are prophets. Some of you are teachers. Some of you need to dream so that you can be those prophets and teachers. I'm activating that gift of dreaming again in the name of Jesus. I release it over you. Every person who is ready to receive is receiving that gift again in the name of Jesus. An activation is coming over you now in the name of Jesus. Just touch your tummy. Just touch your tummy. That's where it is. That's where it is. That's where your spirit is. That's where it is. That's where it's going to come from. An activation now in the name of Jesus. 
I release it over you. I see activation happening. I see activation happening. I see some of you are going to text me. Some of you are going to phone me and say, I can't stop dreaming. I see some of you are just going to start dreaming. You're going to be reminded of some of the warnings that you've had and you're going to respond to them. You're going to see breakthrough come in your relationships. I even see some of you women are going to have dreams again about your husbands and it's going to restore your marriage again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I release it over you. I release restoration that's going to come through your dreams and the interpretation of your dreams. In Jesus' name, I release the Holy Spirit over you. Dreams, 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 dreams. In Jesus' name, I see businessmen who's going to get strategy again. I see you're going to see in your dream what you must do, what you must do with certain employees. You're going to dream about certain employees and you're going to know how to handle them because you had a dream, because God gave you a dream. Activation, 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 activation in Jesus' name. Activation in Jesus' name. No more fear, no more doubt. You will wake up and you will know God spoke to you. You will wake up and you will know that God has spoken to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.